think that in this in this astro live chat what we should do is we should talk about this week ahead because and like the video that I just posted on my Instagram hey babes welcome back <laughs> the video that I posted on my Instagram a few moments ago or an hour or so ago it was a snip a snip a snip a snapchat a snippet <laughs> I'm so tired. It was a snippet pulled from the video that I put, you know, I put up earlier and I just put all of my energy into that, all of my heart into that, into sharing that message. But the number three came through and there's a few things that I want to talk about with that. You know, we're in the, the 2019, which is the year of the Empress um, and also the year of the Hanged Man. And I have yet to dive into the symbolism of that on my YouTube channel, but I fully intend to. But again, we're in this energy of being able to receive and flowing with things and having more faith over, you know, forcing and trying and pushing and fighting. And um, for, for not forcing, but asserting your will and dominating is not a bad thing. In fact, 2018 was a lot of that when we were under the, the, the energy of the justice card, which was maintaining balance and creating balance, which means that something was off balance, which means now we need to exert the energy in order to, to make it right, to make it just. And if there is an imbalance, then that means that there is an, um, a, a, um, something is being underserved in order for there to be an imbalance there. And we saw this in our politics. We saw this in our, um, in our lives as we try to give, exert mas masculine energy and as we work to receive. But in 2019, our energy is 100% focused on receiving and attracting. And that's why I think that from spilling over from last week when we had Sun conjunct Pluto, the energy was pushing down because Pluto applies pressure. And that's been sitting there for a long time. But the Sun has been moving all year round to finally meet with Pluto at this point in time in the sign of Capricorn. And meets up, and when the two come together, they push down with all of their weight. Pluto pushes down with all of its weight. And all of last week, like I said, it was this tube that's kind of squeezing out the truth. And what happens is it's almost like an examination of yourself, a reflection of yourself that gets mirrored back to you. Here, Maybe here you are sitting here. It, you know what just came to me? It almost reminds me, because I was using the, the metaphor of the mirror in my video, but it almost reminds me in Harry Potter, it's the mirror of Erised, I think, which is desire spelled backwards, but pretty much what that was, and for those of you guys that watched, um, or for those of you guys that watched or read the book Harry Potter, that mirror was when you look, when you look into it, it reflects to you your heart's truest desires, to the point where sometimes the people that would look into it they wouldn't understand or they wouldn't recognize it. But whatever it was that they saw made them feel so vulnerable. And that's what it is that I'm seeing now symbolically. Like the symbol of what it is that I'm receiving is connecting to that message. And basically what it is is, is people looking at the reflection looking at themselves, but what's being reflected back is, number one, how they view themselves, number two, how they feel about themselves, number three, all that they've been through, and number four, what they truly, what the, what their hearts truly, truly want. And seeing that and acknowledging it is a moment where you are so vulnerable because you don't have a mask on. A lot of people are walking around and they don't know what they want, A, or B, they know what they want, but they just can't accept it. And the others, you know, we're like, this is what I want and we're calling it in. So we receive it. And to know what you want and to call it in makes you vulnerable because it may or may not happen, especially if it's something that 
can be in your can be inside of your control or outside of your control. Maybe it's luck. Maybe it's the universe, you know, shining its light on you. Maybe it's perfect timing, and you can see that within the astrology chart because the astrology chart is all about your destiny and divine timing. So that's what I'm seeing here is this vulnerability um, that is, you know, kind of lifting itself up and says, "Yoo-hoo, this is me. This is who I am." On the flip side. Pluto comes in and destroys the aspects of ourselves that we're holding on to that don't serve us anymore or hold us back or are stagnant. And then it invites in total change, total transformation in ways that will and can be uncomfortable to us. This is when you see like, depending especially on what Pluto rules within your chart, this is, I'm seeing a lot of you guys talking about love and love relationships right now and soulmates, so that's really awesome. Because that's that's ultimately what it is that I'm, you know, one of the big major aspects of what it is that I'm seeing and what it is that I'm feeling. But um, um, at some aspects, sorry if you hear the dog barking in the in the courtyard. But some aspects of that of this energy will sh reveal to you that there's some things that you've been holding on to that are literally like sand. And why is that? Like, because Capricorn wants to build, and you guys, I feel like a broken record, and I'm sorry for those of you guys that are so sick of hearing this, but Capricorn wants to build up using concrete and brick. And when Capricorn is laying down the foundation, it, has, it wants to use things that it can build up on. If it's working with sand, that sand is going to slip through your fingers. And when all of these, when the planets are crowded in the sign of Capricorn, you don't want to build your foundation on sand because sand is going to sweep, sweep away. When energy starts to flow, it will move the sand with it. And then you're just there trying to keep your balance, trying to catch your balance. Pluto will destroy anything that is built on sand in order for you to build on concrete. That being said, you're going to watch as these cracks start to reveal themselves. You're going to see cracks in relationships. You're going to see cracks in your career. You're going to see cracks within yourself, within your own personal healing. And you're not meant to look at that and say, you know, this is a bad thing or I'm not strong enough. It's not that you're not strong enough because half of the time our strength is this perception of who we are. So it's the ego. It's our understanding. And if things maintain the same and if things don't change, we can also move move along and have this perception that I'm so strong, nothing can break me, nothing can stop me. But is that really truly the case? Because when something comes in and you know shakes up your foundation, are you able to stand up? Are you able to believe in yourself? Are you able to stay healthy? Are you able to um, move through the obstacle and survive it and then thrive it? Or is it, is, is it this perception of strength that is really this kind of like blockade that you've created that doesn't, isn't real, doesn't really exist? When these planets are moving like this, they will show to you, they will reveal to you. So when you see these cracks within your foundation, this is when you have a moment to examine, okay, this is my weakened spot. The weakened spots are actually the spots where you pull your most strength from. That is without a doubt the truth. I hope that that makes sense for you guys. Outside of the fact that um, this is where you will see the core and the essence of your being, who you are to your nature, but you will be able to plant seeds there. You will be able to grow from there. One of my favorite metaphors that came through to me today, one of my favorite symbols that came through, me, came through to me today, is this idea of concrete and the, and the sidewalk. When I was a little girl, I was in the garage with my dad, and he had a Porsche <laughs> and the garage was just like this spot where he just kept his Porsche and you know you just don't do anything like you know how dads are you know they 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 whatever it is that's important to them you just that's their man cave and that the garage was the man cave and the Porsche was the prize and he had the house that he lived in was kind of like old and Victorian and there were cracks in some of the concrete and that the Porsche was parked on. And one day I was playing with a bucket of sand or salt. I was playing with salt and I was scooping it and pouring it and he told me, don't do that. Because what happens is, is that 
the salt will fall into the concrete and then when it freezes it you know pushes out it expands and it make it breaks up the concrete but in all the spots of these cracks that you know um, that were created by the salt falling there from him salting to protect the um, to, to protect the ground um, there were these uh, uh, you know crevices that started to grow with earth and started to grow with plant material and those plants would push through and I'm saying that now because you know we concrete and stone is one of the most firm things like the most strong strong things that we can create as human beings to in order to create a solid solid foundation for ourselves but over time it's not um usually it's not uh things blasting at it that break it down it's the soft things it's this you know these cracks these tiny things this water flow this uh, the elements that come in and over time wear it down and that's ultimately i hope that this um Okay, wait. Um, LTL Bit Flower says you said not to push things too much last week. How does this play into this week? Same thing. You're not pushing, and I want you guys to understand me when I say this. Like this energy that I'm talking about is not you forcing. This is you flowing. So again, it's very subtle. That energy is still here, and it's going to bleed out into the rest of 2019. So even though something is being destroyed, um, even though something is being created, it's not from you forcing it. It's from over time, this effortless abundance, or maybe in that moment, this effortless blooming that happens on its own time. If you think about a flower, there's some flowers that, you know, you go to bed and you don't even see the little bud, but the next day you, you have a full bloom there. And it's not because the flower forced itself, it's because the flower bloomed overnight. And then you have other flowers that take time, that you can see them, you keep tending to them, and finally they start to bloom, and it takes, you know, you, you can watch them, and it could take like a week or some change, especially like roses or peonies, they take some time to bloom, and then when they bloom, they stay there. The lotus is the same way. So it's like, it's not that you're forcing anything. I don't want you guys to see that something is being created, and now you have to do, you have to push, you have to force, you have to fight. This is the polar opposite of what it is that you need to do. If anything, the universe is breaking things down for you. All you have to do is lift your feet up and kind of flow and flight and flow with it instead of force it and fight it to come in. That's why in this snippet that I put in on today's um, IG, you know, it comes it comes across a little force forceful, but it, it literally is pulled from a, a something else, another message that it was that I was receiving, which is again, you know, we're not pulling anything with us into 2019. If you find yourself trying to drag things in, you're doing too much. And 2019 is is going to be the lesson of you um, not forcing your will, but clearly knowing what it is, clearly setting intention for it not settling for anything less, directing your energy and focusing your energy in a way that you won't be distracted or you won't be chasing multiple things. You'll focus and because you're able to focus, because you're able to receive, you actually do receive the most. You'll, 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 be, you'll gain the most. Now back to what it was I was saying about these cracks, these cracks that, is that we're showing, it's, it's a breakdown in your ego, it's a breakdown in your perception, it's a breakdown in your um, how you perceive yourself to be. And it allows you to become more vulnerable so that you can clearly know and be prepared to ask for something that your heart truly wants. And then because you know what it is that you want, because you clearly state it, you are now in a position to receive it. This is like having a vulnerable conversation with God or the divine or with the inner divine within, within yourself in saying, this is what I want. And that honest, like, I give it to you. I have to tell you guys this message that came through to me, but I'm not going to do it tonight. But last week, you know, I know that there were a few people, like my, 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 not my friends, but I feel like my family, that was a little concerned because they were like, it sounds like Jess is giving up. And it wasn't, I'm not giving up. Like, that wasn't what I was trying to say. It was that I relinquish, you know, asking. I relinqu, I don't know how to describe it to you guys, but it's like I was giving my power holding on to my power, but giving the universe the opportunity to work for me on my behalf without me having to lift a finger. So that's what I meant by I surrender, I give up, I let go. It's not that I've given up on what I'm 
set the intention for or what it is that I want, it's that I have allowed myself to be in a position where I'm, I've already called it in and I don't have to do anything more. So now I can fall back and I don't have to lift a finger. And even to this day, you know, I'm already watching that kind of like manifesting and it's already what, January 14th is the first month of the year. We have what, 11 more months left to go. It's insane. It's insane what happens when you stop, especially when it's something that you truly want. Everything within you sometimes wants to fight for it. But again, it's focus. It's, you know, you have to do the work. You have to, but when you do the work, it's not to the point where you've exhausted yourself or you are dragging things in or you're trying to force it. It's more of this is what is right. This is what feels good. This is what I will do. And I will do this and then I will receive this and being in that position. Misha L says, letting go is what has given me my manifestations. Exactly. The Curly Gemini says, be unattached to the outcome. Exactly. You know what the outcome is going to be for the most part because you can feel it in your heart and your soul. When you allow the cracks to show you, and the cracks only happen when life does things, like when life happens to you. So if you are in a relationship and you know the relationship is breaking down or you're, there's aspects of yourself that you are being mirrored back to you, you learn about yourself. You learn what you want. You learn what you don't want. Then when that relationship wants time to go, you let it go and you take what it is that you want to keep with that. You apply it to the next intention for the next relationship if that's what you want. The things that it is that you don't want, that's what you release. But either way, you call it in. You're not dragging your partner with you because you've let that go. Maybe that partner will come back, but it's up to the universe to allow it to flow back to you if it's meant to come. But other than that, you're not forcing, you're not fighting, you're not pushing or doing anything outside of you know, you receiving and you flowing. Um, but the cracks reveal to you what your heart truly wants and, and what it is that you need to be open to receiving now and what you should be calling in now. Um, and when, the, when the, the ego is here as a shell, and the ego is there because it's like, this is what I understand about myself. This is what I want. But then when you start cracking, when you start experiencing these things, you start seeing these cracks, you start getting holes, you know, you know, grenades thrown at you and just little aspects of yourself start to shed. That's when you're like, okay, I'm vulnerable right now. Being in a vulnerable spot, being in a space of complete submission to the universe, being in a space of complete um, release to the divine, to the divine within you, means that you have now opened up to the infinite potential of what can happen for you and it will happen sooner rather than later because you are no longer fighting against divine will. You are no longer fighting against your divine purpose. Especially if you've already called it in. Especially if you've already stated it and you know that that's what your heart truly wants. So instead of you trying to figure it out and walk in the direction, you actually float and you get there faster. Rebel Hairwear says, now I get why I got the tower card. Exactly. 3-3, three, three, look, see the number 3. Amira says, I'm shedding like a snake. Exactly. Blessed Locke says, facts. The Air Goddess, number 3, says, Pluto is transiting my third house. The number 3 is everywhere today. Also, I really want you guys to look into the number 3. Because the number 3, even in the Bible, it's like the number of Holy Trinity. In, this, in the astrology chart, it's the sign of the trine, trine, trinity, number three, three points coming together in perfect perfection, and that's when something can be created. Within the astrology chart, it actually creates the womb. This symbol, this symbolized, this symbol here is the womb, meaning like feminine energy, divine feminine energy, which means something finally has the portal to come out. Something can now be created. Something now can be birthed. In the Bible, you have the three aspects, and I love the, the symbolism of the Bible. Um, and for those of you guys who are like, Jess, you're not a, you know, you can't call yourself a Christian, so you can't, you know, talk about the Bible. I can talk about whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> That's the crazy thing. And I can pull symbolism from any spiritual, spiritual belief. I can pull symbolism from any religion that is out there because they're all the same in my opinion and nothing is out of limits to me. The only thing that created limits was society, and if you're still in that societal society mind frame of this is off limits, this is where 
there's a line that gets crossed or this is a boundary here, there are no boundaries. The only boundaries are the ones that you've created in your mind and those boundaries that you created in your mind do not apply to me. So I'm going to refer to the Bible. For those of you guys that get offended, I don't care. <laughs> um, and I say that with love. But, you know, um, Jesus is one of the ascended masters that came down and, you know, the messages that he brings are not off limits to me because some, because you know, you don't understand why I'm able to talk about it. Whatever. That's a topic for another conversation. And we're just not going to talk about that today because I don't have time. And also, I'm moody, if you can't tell. But, um, but yeah, there's three aspects within the, the Bible, which is um, God the Father, the Holy Ghost, and man. And if it wasn't for that, we wouldn't have this perfect, this perfect creation. We wouldn't have this perfect energy. Um, there's the, the, the number three just keeps on appear, appearing on the third day he rose from the dead. Why the third? Because that's when the moment was perfect. That's when everything came to completion. There's always three. There's always three, um, uh, three um, children from one of the, I can't even re freaking remember. Because my brain is fried right now. And I'm definitely not going to remember their names because I can't remember people's names in my own personal life. But it's always the number three. And that's when energy comes to um, a perfection. That's when something is being created. And that the number three just kept coming through. And I don't know if that's something that's going to blossom on the third day of this week, but it was so clear. I don't know if it's going to be, you know, part of you guys seeing 333 or 33 or whatever. Again and again and again and again. I don't think that you should look for it. But, yeah, um, hell, Hello French Cho says, Mother Maiden Crone, yeah. The Triple Goddess, exactly. Blessed Locke says, the triangle is the strongest shape in, in geometry because it's supported. By each angle is being totally supported. So it is what it is. Um, yeah, the trine creates flow, effortless flow. <sighs> All right, um... Um, Biddy Lynn says, spirit, soul, and body. Absolutely. Lola Schaefer says, 333 and 777 all this past month. S. Rug says, I've been seeing 444 a lot lately. Okay, so. Oh, someone just brought up a really good point that says, Brooklyn, Brooklyn Butterfly says, Jess, what about the mother, the divine feminine, the holy trinity, mother plus father equals child exactly exactly you got it girl all of these things are just you know perfect they're signs of perfection masculine energy feminine energy together creates it doesn't have to be man and female like or man and woman it's and it, you have to look at it in the eyes of the energy like the spirit world the spirit world doesn't say, this is one thing, this is one thing. It says, this is masculine energy, this is feminine energy. It doesn't say, oh, this is a woman, she's not, you know, because she's a woman and has a vagina and breasts, then she is feminine, you know, because some women are very masculine. The, the universe understands energy. So even if you are a man and you come into this life with feminine energy, that's feminine energy that it is that you're exuding. So you have feminine energy with you. It's not because you have a penis that makes you masculine. It's not only that that makes you masculine, even though it makes you an eyes of the man. It's like these lines, these boundaries, these things, these titles that it is that we try to create in order to, in order to better understand our world. But it doesn't have to be that way. Like it doesn't, in the eyes of the spirit world, it's, you know, you're not confined to anything. It just under, understands energy. That's it. Um, Samantha Page K says, is Animal Spirit video coming this week? I'm so looking forward to it. Yeah, actually, it's it's up, but it's I'm still editing it. For some reason, I'm having a really hard time editing it. For some reason, when I filmed it, I repeat myself, like, you know, multiple times in the video, and I'm just like, which pieces, you know, do I want to edit? It's my own fault, and it's right in the middle. So I, I am just kind of, you know, switching things up and changing it up and nipping and nipping it out so that I'm not like a little broken record in that. All right. Um, the other thing that I'm seeing is on the 18th, Venus. Speaking of the connection between feminine and masculine energy, Venus, feminine, trines, Mars. 
on the 18th. So this is two days after the third day, but I don't want you guys to lock in and just have this like high heightened expectation. Again, you want to force, you don't want to fight. I'm sorry. You want to flow, you don't want to force or fight. So don't try and push your will. Allow the universe to take you. Don't just, if, if you can, forget what I'm saying right now so that you can just flow into it and then revisit this and watch it later and then be like, oh, that's what Jess was talking about. But for right now, on the 18th, um, Venus Feminine is meeting up with Masculine in a trine. And they come together and they want to create. They want to express. They want to experience. They want to feel. And this is another one of those days that I feel is so, you know, wonderful for um, creation, for love, for attraction, for calling things in, for allowing yourself to be vulnerable. Um, Venus is going to be nearing soon Neptune towards the end of the week, probably next week. And again, you know, it, the, 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 uh, the internet loves to dog this. I'm not going to dog this because, yeah, she can create fantasy and illusion. But I truly feel like at this point in our journey, if you are listening to your intuition, you are, and you're not ignoring the red flags, you're going to be fine. If you are still densely, stubbornly trying to fight and push and reject what your intuition is trying to tell you, then you're going to be vulnerable and susceptible to being deceived. But if you are, again, if you're listening to your intuition and if you're keeping an open mind and you're ready to flow, I feel like you'll be moved into a space where it's infinite potential that can be created from this. If you want to connect with um, a romantic partner, this is the day around this day this week in order to make that happen. I see this as fun. I see this as you guys or whoever this is. I see this as going into a space that makes you feel fun or makes things feel fun. Not everything needs to be heavy all the time. In fact, if we're doing the level of energy work that is that we're doing, it's more important now that you guys enter into a space where you are able to have fun, where you're able to have pleasure because it's too heavy to carry on hurt, ache, and suffering with you in an attempt to understand it at every moment of your life. You know, everything has to have its moment, everything has to have its space, and laughter itself, love itself, pleasure, smiling, joy itself is just as healing as the moments where you are releasing, where you are crying, where you are, you know, um, letting go of your need to control, where you're forced into submission. That same day is when the mind, Mercury, meets with and communication meets with Pluto the planet of change so this is when the mind changes the brain changes it's awakened it's sees things for what it is it's deep it's diving it's connected it's committed it's here it's now it's present again the internet's going to take this and run with it the internet's going to say that this can you know this is going to be such a heavy time and it can be but there's aspects of it. There's that's one side of it. The other side of it is, you know what? I need. To, I want to make this bond. I want to make this bind. You know, I. I again. I. I call this in. Pluto is control. Pluto is power. There is nothing wrong with a person who has who has claimed their control and claimed their power and uses it in order to call things in, in order to communicate with the divine in order to activate the divine within them. There is nothing wrong with that. Why is power and why is control always deemed negative? Because society wants to keep you in a, in a spot where you're diminished or because there's people who abuse it. But because others have abused it doesn't mean that you're going to abuse it because that's an imbalance of power. And power in, in balance is a very good thing. Control in a good thing, I'm sorry, control with balance is a very good thing. They're not things to fear. They're things to strive for. Having power over yourself, having power over your words, knowing when to use your words, knowing to, when to assert yourself, knowing when to be dominant, knowing when to fall back, knowing when to release your power, to when to release your control, the right opportunities, the right moments. When is it most appropriate? That's what Pluto wants to give to you. 
And the crazy thing is, is that after we've experienced all before the 18th, that is when I feel the 19th and when the, the planets are showing, okay, she or he has done the work. She or he knows. If you're open to it. If you make time for it. If you don't, then why are you watching this? I don't mean to be an asshole, but at the same time, like, you know, if, if we're coming on here and we're talking about these things and we're talking about the energy, then you yourself have to do something. You can't, you know, sit back sometimes and just be like, I'm going to be totally passive in this. When it's time for you to move, it's time for you to move because you're intuitively guided. You're intuitively being called to move. So at some point, like this is your mind is made up. Your mind is focused. So, um, and I, I don't want that to come across rude. I just think that that's just how I am right now. I'm actually in a good mood, but I mean, I'm moody, but I just like, sometimes I don't have fluff. Like I don't have the smile to give to it. So it's not that I'm being, I don't want to come across rude. I just want to be direct, which is that, you know, if you're being called to, to do certain stuff and you don't take those steps and if you stay rigid and if you refuse to move again, if you refuse to flow, where everything is going to pass by you. There comes a point in your life where being stubborn is actually you being stupid because you simply will not open your hands up to receive what the universe is trying to give to you. You simply will not take the step after the universe says, come, 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 come. How many times do I have to tell you to come? It's safe. I'm protecting you. At that point, the universe and energy, it's like, it, it starts to pass you, it starts to bypass you because you're too stubborn and you're too rigid that you will not allow yourself to flow into this next space. <laughs> Lubricates lips. <laughs> oh my gosh. That being said, um, the 19th is a really interesting day. I want you guys to put a star on this. That's a good question. Gordon says, how do you flow versus not doing anything? So I think also too with that is like this conflicting message that I feel like people are hearing from me, which is, okay, Jess, I flow and do nothing, but then at some point I do something. And I understand how that sounds. So basically, if you, it, let me use myself as an example, and after this I'm probably gonna have to cut this down because, um, I'm gonna you know, sign off soon. But I'm gonna use myself as an example. So I'm a very assertive person. I know what I, well, I'm not assertive, but I'm very determined, I'm very motivated. I know what it is that I want. I also work a lot with feminine energy. Well, feminine and masculine, but at this point I'm working with feminine energy because it's about being in a position to receive. Being in a spot where I'm literally flowing with certain things, right? Oh, I just got a metaphor, but it's not a good one. It's not a cute one. It's not attractive, but it's very feminine. Do I share it? Okay, I'm going to share it. So, no, I'm going to switch it up a little bit. I'm going to switch it up because it's too, it's too much. But that's what came through. And if you guys are my friends, like if we were sitting and I wasn't public right now, I would say it because I know it wouldn't go out on the internet. But, okay, think of, are you getting hot, baby? I have a heated blanket on because my cramps are like, hey-ho. Okay, um, think of a woman who is giving birth. And her contractions are tightening because something is being created. Something is getting born. Something needs to be born into this world. So there comes a moment where she's breathing and she's rocking, and she's being supported. She's being supported by her partners, she's being supported by the universe, she's being supported by divine timing, because divine timing is, is saying now's the time. So she's breathing through it, she's supporting herself, she's mentally, emotionally, spiritually supporting herself. In her head, she's, you know, mantras, singing, music, people are rubbing on her, because she's in a position right now where she's doing nothing. It's not that she herself is not doing anything. Everything is happening within her body because everything is preparing for birth. But she herself is not moving. But everything is happening around her. Everything is happening within her because birth is being prepared. 
think listen listen to my words here and this is think of and apply this to your life right now so even though you're being still and she's listening she's calling in even in that moment if you're going through birth and you're doing it with shamans and if you're doing it with um, like birth doulas they're calling in spirit you have spiritual protection around you so that's the same thing you're calling in protect us guide us help us to strengthen ourselves as we move through this let this be divine timing put your hands of protection all over my body as I move throughout this birthing process speak to me that moment is when she is most sensitive that moment is when she's most vulnerable but at that moment where she's most vulnerable, she she can't run, she can't do, because she's just about to give birth to something. But that's everything that it is that she wants, is to, to focus, to stay focused, because the goal is to birth this into actual manifestation. It's something that has been working on for a long time. All of 2018, she's been working on building this. All of 2017, all of 2016, and now 20... 2019 we're sitting here we're giving birth and we're focusing on our breathing we're focused we're doing nothing but everything is happening at the same time she's not pushing when the contraction comes yeah she feels it she feels it she feels the pain I feel it I feel it I feel it I am experiencing it I release it if her body has to vomit because she has to expel then she has to expel if she has to cry she releases it and she lets it go because she's flowing she's not forcing it she doesn't push and push and push right now because she's conserving her energy for the moment, the perfect moment, that trine. When everything comes together, when everything comes to perfect completion, that trine comes in, that holy trinity, and that's when divine timing hits, and that's when she has to give birth. So still we're here. We're doing nothing. We're waiting. We're breathing. We're getting support. The contraction comes. Okay, here we go. We feel it. We feel it. We experience it. We release. We release. We push a little bit. We push a little bit. But nothing is being created yet. I still have done nothing, but I've done everything. I'm flowing. I'm not forcing. Now, when time is right, when the timing is right, when the planets have aligned in that child's life, or whatever it is that you are about to give birth to in 2019, whether it be your soulmate, whether it be your actual career, whether it be that fat check, whether it be that house, that security, whether it be a reality TV show, um, sign, you know, signature deal, whatever it is. When that time comes and divine timing has all aligned itself, you will then receive the signal to push. That is when you fucking push. All right, but you don't push recklessly. You push with focus and you push with intention. Now is the time. I will push this out. I will give birth to this. When the universe signals to you and when spirit tells you stop pushing, everything within your body sometimes is going to scream and say, I have to, I have to. And they say, no, you have to wait. You have to wait. Follow. Do not force. Do not fight this. You put yourself in danger. You put your child in danger. You put everything on the line if you push right now. I know physically, logically, it makes sense for you to push, but we are watching this. Your angels, your guides, your spirit, everything is, you are in the hands of the divine right now. You need to flow. You need to respect. And then when we say go, that's when you go again. And when you push, perfect timing, it pops out. It's here. It's present. It's materialized. It's in your hands because you then, you learned how to work with masculine, feminine, divine feminine, being able to receive, knowing when to push, knowing when to act, when, when to release. <sighs> That in itself is a message. Then the next feeling is unbelievable gratitude. Because everything up until this point in your life now makes sense. All of the hard work, all of the complications, all of the stress, all of the struggle, all of it now makes sense because it's sitting there on your chest. You created it. You co-created this, this life, whether it be an actual child, whether it be um, your job, whether it be your relationship. And you know what? I, it's that moment where you look at it and you say, this is everything to me. I will do everything in my power to make sure that this grows because I worked so hard and I'm invested in this. And this is an aspect of myself that I co-created. And now here it is breathing life in my hands. It's, it's here. It's now. It's present. 
Nothing will take this away from me. I will do everything in my power to protect it and make sure that it continues to grow and to thrive. And that feeling of gratitude, that feel, feeling of overwhelming emotion that it's here. Oh my God, my prayer was answered. All of it makes sense. I don't even deserve this, but you do, but you do. Um, the 19th is that moment <laughs> when things just, you know, unravel, things kind of pop off. And instead of you looking at it and panicking, because the internet is going to want you to panic, the world is going to want you to panic, because it makes clicks, it makes you know life exciting. It's not about entertainment, it's about your life, it's about reality. So um, the, this, the world, the society, the internet can scare you, but Sun Square Uranus is not something to be afraid of, but it's everything for you to be flexible with. It's everything for you to flow with. Once that happens, right after, the sun moves into the sign of Aquarius. And Aquarius is the sign of, okay, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm, I need to do for me. It's very independent. It says like, this is, you know, this path that I have to take, it might be fearful for me. It might be um, the unknown. You know, it might be uncomfortable, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk. Because I cannot, I have to break free from you know these restrictions i have to break free from this environment that that isn't conducive to my growth and i knew this i knew it and i didn't leave this is okay this mindset that i have it's this belief that i had but does it serve me i don't think that it does because it's i've i've blocked out blessings already I've had things fall away from me that were so good because I, I couldn't allow myself to receive it because I was so stuck in a toxic mindset. And I'm going to look at those, those, those um, shattered aspects of myself and I'm not going to judge it. I'm going to see it for what it is. I'm going to accept it. But I also see my vulnerability and for that I vow to do better. I vow to do different. I vow to receive. Now I finally, I finally vow to receive. Why is it now? Because Sun, Pluto, Saturn have been moving through the sign of Capricorn. Saturn and Pluto have been moving through the sign of Capricorn for a long time. So it's lessons that we're learning over time. If it wasn't for those lessons, if it wasn't for getting thrown grenades at you, you wouldn't be who you were today. That's nothing to look at and be embarrassed about. It's everything to look at and be like, I am so fucking proud of my journey. I'm so proud of myself. I know I'm not perfect, but I'm trying. I'm going to do better. I know it moving forward I'm going to make, make mistakes, but am I not worth it? Am I not worth trying? Is it am I is the value of my life is it worth living? And the answer is yes. So when sun comes in and squares Uranus and the next day the sun moves into the sign of Aquarius, we move differently. We do differently. You guys really need to be careful. No shade. You guys really need to be careful who you're listening to and what messages it is that you're receiving on a spirit level because there's so many people who are coming in. I'm not I'm not naming names. I'm not pointing fingers. I'm not I didn't come in here to, to throw shade or to throw anybody on, under the bus, but you guys have to look at who and what you're following and what you're listening to because they are speaking into you. What is it that they're speaking into you? Like, what is it? You need to make sure that it's something that is building you up and giving you life versus enabling toxic behavior. And it's painted in a, in a little bow to make it look good. I'm not saying any names. I'm not, like, my intention is not to, like, be shady right now or be cryptic. I'm not, but I'm just being honest. And if it's not Instagram, it's your personal life. It's your relationships. It's the people around you. Don't be afraid to block bitches. <laughs> the 21st is when we have the eclipse, the full moon eclipse. And that's going to be another game changer. I mean, so soon afterwards, we have what I say, this is a heart explosion. The heart exploded. And in a good way. And um, 
that's the, the metaphor that keeps coming through. I haven't sat and meditated on it any further, but every time I talk about the Leo eclipse, I hear heart, heart oh, exploded. All right. Um, I freaking love you guys, like for real, for real, with all of my heart. Um, just know my intention is always good. My intention is always pure. Take or leave my messages for what they are. If it doesn't serve you, throw it away. If it does, take it with you. Um, 2019, again, is going to be the year of the game changer. I am not the same person who, who I was. There are so many, you know, in a good way, from last, you know, last year. I don't trade, I wouldn't trade anything in. I wouldn't do anything differently. I would just learn the lesson faster and I would move forward faster. So, um, yeah, that's, well, that's pretty much what I have to say. Um, this week's forecast is up for you guys on um, Bahati Life's YouTube channel, my YouTube channel. I go in full detail of that. There's aspects of this message that coincide with, that just came through through like that birthing metaphor that symbolic metaphor that just came through that really support that message and I just find that so amazing so to the person who asked me that question as far as just you know how do we merge flowing and doing nothing with acting that's your answer my love and I'm so glad that I saw your comment because if it wasn't for me seeing that and, and you being called to ask that I wouldn't have known to answer it so thank you so much, you guys, for the questions that you asked, for participating, for accepting me, for loving me, for listening. That's such a big thing, for seeing me. Um, you know, it's just everything. Also, moving forward, I do, I've been going through a lot in my personal life as far as, you know, my, my I've been going through a lot in my spiritual life. I've been getting a lot of, like revelations that I just wasn't expecting right now because I spent a lot of my time in my life um, on this like spiritual journey and then I felt called to do the work and I started doing the work the physical work of it and that's when Bahati Life was created and then I felt called to come to New Orleans and as soon as I came to New Orleans everything got quiet and I didn't understand it right away, but now I do. Now I'm really starting to understand why. And it's like, okay, this is no longer you doing the physical work. This is now do, you doing the spiritual work of it. And I was forced into submission. The universe, the divine, has forced me into a space of submission. And I didn't question. I questioned it verbally out loud. I questioned it emotionally by talking to my family, talking to my friends, and being like, I don't, <sighs> like crying, you know, and you know, t telling them what it was that I was saying, because what I, what I was feeling, because some talking about it gives me more messages. That's why YouTube has been so amazing for me, um, because it allows me to talk, and I get more, and I gain more clarity by communicating. So the same thing happens when I'm on the phone with my mom or my friends, my best friends, and that's, you know, I, I, I remember it like, you know, just submitting, totally submitting, and when I did that, it wasn't that I get, I'd given up. It seems like it on the outside that I've given up. It seems like I stopped trying because that's what it sounds like, but it wasn't. It was a total submission to the divine and the divine's will over my life. And me not doing anything in order to receive everything as far as what I needed to hear, what I needed to feel, what I need to experience, and then ultimately what my next steps are going to look like. And this is a total new Jess. Like it's a, a new, on a personal, on a spiritual level. I'm just new. I'm different now. I, I, I'm different. I don't apologize for, you know, my voice. I don't apologize for what I want. I don't apologize for what my life looks like and what my life feels like and what I'm doing. Like I don't apologize for any aspect of it. I've never, I don't have any bad intentions. Anybody who's ever crossed paths with me can never say that I've ever tried to hurt anybody. And so, you know, it's not that I'm changing on that way, that it's like, oh, I'm going to do differently in that way. It's like my moves are different. My magic is different. My power is different. And, you know, you guys have really been a part of that because, and a, and a tool in that, like a, a big chunk in that because me talking about it and me 
dedicating my life, my life and my messages to helping you and to helping guide others has also been a mirror that has reflected back to me what I needed to do next and also reminded me balance, you know, just, you know, give this to others. And then also simultaneously by giving this to others, you're giving it to yourself, but also boundaries and protection. So then in this spot, you give to yourself here. It's just an interesting balance, balancing act that I'm coming into, that I'm stepping into once I was 30. And, it's, you know, and maybe I'll talk about it. Um, maybe I'll talk about it in like a life update or something, but... It's just been so interesting because like the universe will say, like there'll be moments where I'm like, woo, woo, <laughs> where I'm like, oh my God, revelation. And I wanna like call, call someone and be like, this is what I just realized. And then as soon as I say that, I get this symbol that's like, you're not done yet. Like that's a small piece. You're not done. That's like a small, like your, your mind is so blown by that tiny revelation but like that's a small crumb compared to this cake that we have for you. Like it's a small piece of what's going to make this entire thing up. Wait till you see that. So don't say anything yet. Just keep experiencing, keep processing this, keep writing it down, keep journaling, keep experiencing it. So that, and the more that you experience, the more that you call it in, the more that you're open to it, the more you will actually receive on many levels. I have everything that I want physically manifested. I went from legit having nothing, which you guys know my story, um, and not even believing in God, not believing in the divine, not believing in law of attraction or spirit, to being forced into submission. Oh, wow. Oh, my God, that's so crazy. So I just remember, too, like, that moment when I like legit was forced into submission, I had I, I lifted my head up. It was in a field. I don't know if you guys remember the story, but I was in, I was forced into submission in like a field by the universe, by spirit, and I was like crying. I couldn't even walk anymore. Like literally, all the the the, the strength in my legs gave out, and I fell in a field in mud. And like my family was, my dad was moving to the UK. I I, I knew that I couldn't go to Saint you know, go back to Florida, and I was going to live in the woods, like I was living in the woods, long story, and I just, like, broke down, and I was like, I don't believe in God, like, I don't believe in you, like, I just was so upset, I was so angry, and I was really rejecting it, and I'm like, what is real, what is real, and all of these things were going on, and I, like, everything got quiet, and that was my first moment experiencing spirit, that was my first moment experiencing the divine, and then in that moment, I was like, oh my God, God is real, God is this loving energy, this unconditionally loving energy, and you know these feelings that I've been seeing, feeling, and these things that I've been seeing—they're very much real. And it, everything got quiet. Everything got so still, like nothing. I could hear nothing. And I like, I was like, "There's something with me right now," and it's the presence of God. And I lifted my fa my face up, and there were all these deer around me, and they were so close. And if you're from New Jersey, like deer don't come up to you, like they really don't unless they're like taught to or domesticated in some way, but these were wild deer and they just legit, you know, were all around me. There was all this fog that came out of, the, out of nowhere. And I wasn't on the ground for that long because I had just fell, fallen and just started crying. And there was all these deer and I just knew, I was like, oh shit, everything's gonna be okay. Like I, I had this sense within me, like this divine knowledge that everything was gonna be okay. And I was like, in that moment, I was like, God is real, divine is real. This is all these, this truth started coming through. And then as soon as I had that realization, my phone rang and it was someone who was just like Jess. And I was like, yeah. And she was like, where are you? And I was like, I literally like, I went from like bawling, crying to like everything getting quiet and silent. So I had my phone and I was like, I'm in a field. And then she was like, okay, I'm coming to get you. She's like, I don't know why. I felt like I needed to call you right now and you know I, I have a connection for you I in this was like seven o'clock eight o'clock at night it was pretty late like she was like I have a connection for you um, you know we're coming to get you whatever blah 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 and then she showed up and my life everything that it was that I needed manifested within months right afterwards and that's just my own story my own journey but anyways the reason why that was so crazy to me just now is because 
since I've been here and then that moment where I had that that there was recently like within the last week I was telling my mom last week so maybe two weeks ago within a two week span time frame I was on the phone with my mom so it might have been early, mid last week I, I called her and I was just like mom I'm, I'm you know I'm getting forced into this submission and it's like you know when I'm crying right now it's not because I'm sad it's not because I've given up it's because I'm exchanging my power I'm giving my power over to the divine so that I can flow now and it's not because I'm you know saying goodbye it's it just feels like the physical side of me is 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 um, giving my power over and it's hard for me to do that right now and I'm not mourning that but I'm going through the feelings of giving away my power to the divine right now to the universe and it's like that sense of release that sense of trust that sense of gratitude that sense of protection was what was making me emotional not this and it wasn't a feeling of loss at all even though I was crying so hard I was at a drag show last week and I just was sitting there and like you know all of the emotions were coming through it wasn't the drag show itself but it was the moment and when I went home, I was having the time of my life, I was with people that I love in New Orleans, and I came home, and I, I, you know, I got in the shower, and as soon as I got in the shower, I broke down, and I just started heave crying so hard, because I, it was the divine saying, just submit, 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 and I had to make a, a choice, a conscious, spiritual choice, like a choice in my spirit, to exchange powers, to exchange where I was drawing my power from and give it to something a bit bigger than me. And it wasn't that I was letting go of my own power, it was that it was just changing. And then I submitted to it again and I just have been seeing the deer again. <laughs> In fact, I'm not fucking kidding, it just dawned on me, I put it on my personal account. I took a photo, actually, yeah, I put it on Bahati Life earlier today. I said, you know, don't let the Bambi face fool you. Bambi is the deer. I just been called to the deer. I put it on my I put it on Bahati Life. I'm sorry you guys. You're like really like walk, sitting with me as I'm walking through this right now. I apologize. Yeah, don't let the forever Bambi face fool you. And then on my personal Instagram, I put the emoji the Bambi again cuz I'm just like that's just so crazy. Those are the two moments I've ever been forced into submission and the deer is there. So I'm going to, and then I'm making the animal totem video. Ah! Ah! I'm just kidding. <laughs> Yo, the universe is so crazy. It's so wild sometimes. I'm going to go spend some time focusing on the deer, I guess, right now. Because and you guys are just, you know with me right now in this process. The video is about to die anyways, or go off. It, I, I was going to cancel, uh, close it out early so that I could prepare, but this actually has given me j as much life that I hope that it's given you. I'm going to put it on my YouTube channel. You guys, thank you so much for not judging me. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being a part of this. And um, I am so excited now. Now I need to find out, you know, what the deer is for me. I just had an epiphany. You see what I'm saying? It's crazy. All right, you guys, I'm out. I love you so much. Um, what are you barking at? He never barks. All right. All right, you guys, I'm out. Um, I've got friends coming over for dinner, so if you want to be a part of our festivities, you can probably catch it on my personal. I think I'm going to put um, some aspects of what we're going to be doing there. We're just going to be eating and probably, you know, hanging out. Um, if you want to see what I made for dinner, you can see that there. But in the meantime, the, the additional messages for you are about 30 minutes that are up on my YouTube channel. Thank you guys so much. I love you. Bonnie says, I love you. Um, Manny Matters says, you have so much light. Thank you. Um, Ashik says, she's going to co-create with the divine. That's the perfect thing for you guys to do. And yeah, I'm out. I'll talk to you later. Bye. <laughs>